I really shouldn't bother, but I'm just going to point out. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know what I can do. I mean, I've caught him on his lies. I've told him that you're just lying. So this is a bullshit premise. It's a bullshit argument. He keeps doing it. So I wrote it out the last time, right? So it's right over here. It's all written out. And he just ignored it. Um, you know, I mean, you can't make it. You put it in writing, and he still won't pay attention to your argument. So. First, the question about logic. Like you know anything about it. Well, apparently they are, and it's a statement that you can't reason from uh, individuals to collectives. Not logic. Well, you know, uh, regardless, it doesn't, make any, it doesn't make any difference. In this case, you don't have any option. You can't understand consciousness any other way than as an individual experience. There's no other way to experience it. There's no other way to test it. There's no other way to feel it. So it really just doesn't matter. This is all we've got. It would be really great if we could do it in some kind of purely technical way, but there isn't a purely technical way to gain evidence. The only evidence that's available is personal, and you're going to have to accept it or reject it. Now, that's all I can do. I can say, look, here's my personal experience. You either have the same personal experience or you don't. But to pretend that we can't sit there and say, yes, okay, those are common experiences among all people, and now we have made it universal by just agreeing that, yes, these are the common characteristics of consciousness. I, I mean, I said this before. I have no help for you. If you don't understand the difference between nail in the eye sensations and cupcake sensations, then let's quit talking to each other because we're not the same animal. You'll never understand my life, ever. To this, Imandum said, I was saying <clears throat> that I'm talking about packaging away reality in little boxes. Whatever, you're just playing fucking games, and that's all you're doing right now, is playing a stupid formal logic game that just doesn't, it's not even an accurate counter-argument. Again, because I haven't done what you've suggested, which has gone from personal to everything. I didn't do that. I did it through a complex, not even complex, through a tedious number of examples of how this is how biological organisms work, this is what evolution created, this is why evolution created, this is how the brain works. I went through all of that. So I universalized all of my evidence, asshole, except for the one piece of evidence, which is I'm conscious, I'm feeling feelings, that's how I know feelings. I can't know them any other fucking way. Oh, shit. To that. Words to that effect. Now that statement, as Imanda Muffin does, is... Another lie coming up. Even on, the, on the very few occasions where he takes the point, Takes what point? Again, see, this whole fucking bullshit, your accusation that somehow somebody hasn't taken your fucking point. You don't make points, okay? You make accusations and you make them based on no fucking evidence, which really sucks. And even replies to the point, from that point onwards, he assumes he's won his point. I don't assume it. I said, I have no help for you. That's what I've said. I said, look, if we can't agree on these premises, there's no conversation. Because everything I believe, everything I know about this universe and my existence in it is based on these premises. So if you don't think there's a cavern of value difference between the sensations of a nail in your eye and the sensations of a fucking cupcake, a cavern of value difference in those sensations, then we have nothing to fucking talk about um, and that there's nothing else to be said and that there are other points that uh... yeah well there is nothing there's absolutely nothing because there's no way I can prove to you okay the reality of that cavern except to say I've personally experienced it I've tasted it I know it exists because I was there period if you don't, you haven't seen it, if you haven't stepped on the edge of it and looked across the cavern and you haven't seen it and you're not aware of its existence and you don't believe it exists, then we, again, we're different fucking creatures. We really have nothing 
substantial in common because everything substantial about my existence, everything I consider meaningful about my existence is connected to my realization of the cavern that exists, my understanding that that cavern is a reality. That is the foundation of almost every fucking thing I believe, every fucking thing I know. And uh, he doesn't understand how how he hasn't really met the point. Yeah, what? I haven't really met what point? I'm not going to meet your point. I'm not going to accept your um, statement that because your consciousness is different than mine, yours is real consciousness. What I'm going to assert is, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that somehow you don't know that cavern, that you haven't experienced it, and that somehow whatever that's what you say you are i'm giving you that i'm saying fine then we're alien to each other we're not the same organism anymore all right i'm going to talk about what it's like to be this kind of conscious you can talk about what it's like to be that kind of conscious and maybe we should come up with a different word for it because it's obviously a different fucking experience so i don't want you talking about what i'm feeling all right and i won't talk about what you're feeling because obviously they're not the same fucking thing. But there's no evidence of why they should be different, so that's going to be a slight problem. So maybe I'll just say you're a fucking goddamn psychotic kook instead. Okay, so the point was that it was a technical matter about logic, about the idea of syllogisms. Um, and I'd hope we can all agree. I, I would hope that we could all agree that this is the stupidest way to, do, to have a conversation about what logic should be anyway. Uh, these non-real examples of silly nonsense. All men have intrinsic value. In men is a man. In men has intrinsic value. Who's saying any of that? Nobody. It has nothing to do with any conversation here. Oh, that's right. You're going to imply that I said that. Oh, that's because you suck more. That we can reason in this way, from the universal to the particular instances. If we say in, in, in standard logic, all men have intrinsic value. All right, let's just go back to this again, right? <sighs> Feeling is value creation. Feelings are sensual evaluations. A brain produces experience of pure raw value. Nothing in here about humans and intrinsic value. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay? Can't be directly observed, must be sampled or experienced to be understood. Just a fact. A circumstantial fact. And it has to be dealt with. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, there is a difference between understanding value and feeling value. Okay, I have sampled consciousness. I have been educated by the experience of sensation. These are f statements I contend are true. How is it not true that I have been educated by sampling consciousness? <sighs> okay, I find sensations to be decidedly of a bad or not bad character. That's a premise. You, if you don't agree that that's what sensations are, then let's just end this bullshit conversation because we're not experiencing consciousness the same way. All right, but anyway, nothing in here about any intrinsic human value. Just about the fact that sensations have value. The experience has value. People don't have any intrinsic value. They have to demonstrate value by producing sensations in the world, in themselves and in the world. And the net sensations have to be positive for them to have in any value. But they can never have intrinsic value. If this is true, then we can say, in, if Mendham is a man, then in Mendham has intrinsic value. That is, the discovery of a universal truth allows us in that category to take any particular instance within that category, like in Mendham being a man. Right, and it's just as easy to sit there and say, I'm, um, as, a, as a man, 
okay, with a penis, I have knowledge of what it is to have a penis. Women don't have penises. Women don't know what it is to have a penis. You can make, you can, you can build logic up from a foundation as long as you make your statements explicit and as long as they're careful, they can lead you to making some kind of generic statement like, I am a common man. I am a regular configuration of the organism. I am a standard model. Um, I am not in some way unique or deviant from um, Homo sapien. I'm a decent enough example of the machinery. And know that he has the property uh, assigned there. So it works like this, and this is very much agreeable. Where, where we know the property of all people, and therefore, in Mendham being a subset of, of all people, um, contains the property. Totally agreeable. Right, and so instead of doing people, you should be doing feelings. So why don't you go property of, uh, of feelings, and then do this bullshit? Because again, I never argued about intrinsic person value. That's your idiotic argument, jackass. So again, you still can't get it right, right? So I'm, what? What can I consider? I mean, I only said it in writing, and you still fucking bastarded it. You still fucked it up. I mean, I gave it to you in writing, and you still can't get it right. I mean, nowhere in here anything about persons. Feeling is value creation. Feeling is value creation. I think everybody. The point I made was that it's a faulty syllogism to to uh, say in Mendham has intrinsic value. This is a straw man all over the place, right? It Mendham doesn't say that anywhere in what he wrote. There's nothing like this anywhere. And Mendham does not argue, I have experienced per personally that I'm intrinsically valuable. No, I've been, I'm talking about feelings. And feelings are not something I possess individually. They are something common to the species. This is an attribute like fur. You could sit there and describe it and say it traps air and creates warmth. It creates a barrier from harm. It does this, it does that. Uh, it provides a place for ticks to hang out. Um... Fuck you. And figure out that Heisberg has intrinsic value and deduce all, therefore, all men have intrinsic value. All right. Never a statement I made. So, again, it was just my argument is in Mendham has experienced value sensations. In Mendham uh, classifies himself as a generic uh, member of his species. And Mendham claims that the generic function of the brain is to produce these value sensations. And that the sensations in Mendham has are of no fundamental difference between his sensations in terms of their value and the value of the other sentient organisms having sensations. That fur is fur is fur is fur. All the rabbits got it. And it's all the same rabbit fur. Yeah, well, fuck you and your can't this and can't that as if you know you said something that means something or said something that was accurate. This is number. This is a preposterous straw man argument, and then it's not even, in my opinion, a reasonable definition of any confinement that logic's under. Logic can go any direction as long as it goes there in careful steps. Truth statement followed by truth statement followed by truth statement. Evidence, 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 direction. It points there. And uh, as in, in Mendham protests, um, he is working totally logically. Everything he says is logical. So, so I don't kind of... I'm saying what I'm saying is accurate until you come up with some argument disproving one of these contentions. You haven't disproven any of them. You haven't given me reason to doubt any of them. Not a shred of doubt. Not, not the slightest doubt. 
nothing. It's all beyond. I'm, I, I mean, there's, no, there's just no reasonable doubt you're providing. No evidence for reasonable doubt. I think he, he missed the technical point that was made. Yeah, whatever. I think the technical point you're making should be shoved up your ass because I think it's bullshit. And I think it was already annihilated by the very premise here. Can't be directly observed, must be sampled to be understood. And you can only personally sample consciousness. You can't collectively sample it. So, in the Venn diagram, the point is, is you can't, from, from the property of two individuals, did you... <clears throat> again, that's not what I was doing. So, again, that's, you know, just lie some more. I was talking about the properties of, of feelings are the property of value, which is the same difference in my opinion because that's the intrinsicness. It's so fucking intrinsic. The thing that's an actual raw value in the world is feelings. And if, you were, if you're going to say what is a feeling, it's by experience value written all over it. There is a property of all. When in fact there's probably there's possibly Pyro out there who who doesn't have this um, property. Again, so this is just all straw man, right? Nowhere did I talk about the intrinsic value of people. I talked about the intrinsic value of their welfare, their feeling entity, how what experiences they have, that has value. Their experiences have value. They don't have any value. Well, Intrinsically. This, this is, I realize. They have to demonstrate or prove their value. They have to earn their qualification as valuable. If we're going to be valuable as individuals, we must earn that status by doing something to create value. Is a side issue as long as, and I think I, I, I recall correctly, and I, I will probably find some clips, but. Yeah, that you can distort and play out of context. Oh, super. Lie some more. I'm sure Imandam says that if, if the, 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 the way. Science works, in a sense, from this reasoning from particular to universal, but with many with many caveats. It first of all works with an appreciation of the possibilities. Like um, used to say that, that all swans were white because every swan we'd seen was in fact white. Who cares? Again, so the, the, the fact that somebody else made a wrong statement about some contention they were making about swans, which I never made, doesn't have a damn thing to do about me. with me. My evidence is right here. My arguments are right here. Prove one of these fallacious or weak or irrational or not meaningfully sensible, and then you can make an argument. But till then, this is all just bullshit. I, I never said all swans were white. It's not my fucking contention. But then we found some black swans in Australia. Um, and as a separate matter of um, philosophy of science, there are modifications to this um, and safeguards which can be put in place. Yeah, right. Like you write it down in text and you say, go ahead, disprove one of these statements. Go ahead, to point out how one of them is irrational or suspect or... No, that can't be quite right. Go ahead. Yeah, that's one of the safeguards. And you didn't do that. Instead, you just lied about what I said. Again. It's to, to allow this to some extent. But that's not what I want to go into. What is, what is rather uh, of fundamental importance, I, I, can't, I can't believe I've not made this point before, <laughs> is... If it is similarity in sameness or a kind of scientific induction by 
Yes, that's the argument, that all the little human animals are basically the same thing, and that only variations are all cosmetic and irrelevant, and that in substance, the mechanism, in terms of its basic function, consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, addiction, the basic psychology, what's in it for me, uh, yeah, that's all consistent. And what's and the fact is that we have a consistent knowledge base. The sciences are there. They're labeled physics, chemistry, biology. They can be studied. They can be understood. Oh, fuck. Looking in oneself and seeing something and saying it has intrinsic value. If if you want to argue from saying this that that you look across and say he has it. Yes, like fur. I look and I say, I have fur. And let's say that there's some way you could say fur was intrinsically valuable, like it was made out of sparkly quantum jingle jangle. I don't know. Well, regardless. See, I can't really use any other example because it wouldn't have a value connotation. Value is a unique subject. It's a unique property. It's, it's a property that's invisible. It can only be recognized by an intellect. It can't be recognized any other way. Then it's not intrinsic. If you had to do that, in fact, to, to look to other instances, then it wouldn't be a, an argument for an intrinsic value. You see, in... Yeah, so that doesn't even make any sense, right? So, so I mean, if I argued that... To, all mammals have tits or something. It's an intrinsic value of mammals. What, what, what's, there's no problem here. Intrinsic means um, relating uh, explicitly. It's connected. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Conscious, sentient organisms that are feeling are producing value. That's the statement. That's right. And we're describing that truth. And it does need describing. I don't. I, what is this crap? It's part of the thing itself. It's very nature. And so. Right, but it doesn't the all the ones all the things experiencing it don't speak english don't have vocabulary can't just say yes i understand that i am producing value by having experience so we describe them they can't self describe self description is a little dangerous anyway right because then people just start talking about how they're the reincarnation of cleopatra or something one would not need to make the inductive argument I don't need to make it, and that's uh, the whole point. I'm I'm not making the con I'm not making it as an argument. I'm stating it as a fact. The fact is that this is what sentient organisms do. They create value. All right. It's not an argument. It's a statement, a fact. So the question would be, how is it, and what is it that by Viewing it inside oneself. That'll... Right, feelings. The only way to see or to know one is to have one. There's no way to describe one to something that never had one. It's just a fact. It's kind of like describing a food to somebody who's never eaten it. You know, some foods are just, you're not going to find anything. It doesn't taste like chicken. Those want to distinguish it between... Uh, that is, as the intrinsic property, which would mean, whereas I might, uh, the, the, the common idiot might say, oh, this pain and suffering business, it's certainly significant, but how, uh, and I, I, I know it's significant to me, but... It... That's what an idiot would say, it's significant to me? I'm just saying, <laughs> they're not going to bother with this, it's significant to me stuff. They're going to understand that surgery is surgery, that um, a scalpel to the abdomen is a scalpel to the abdomen. 
they're going to understand the word torture and they're going to be able to understand it without even experiencing it because they're going to be able to understand it because it's happened to other people and they know it was bad that part I don't even have to make that argument again I don't I don't need to make this argument because you're the aberrant here you're the one you know in the club of lunatics saying I don't understand that I don't understand how me on a gurney somebody else on a gurney isn't the same thing. Most people do understand how that's pretty much the same thing. If I wanted to pro profess that it was significant in some kind of universal sense, what would I... I, I? It's not significant in some sort of universal sense. It's significant by understanding. Okay, it's a significant event happening through the mechanism. The one dishwasher washes the dishes. Okay, the dishes get washed. And other things can recognize that the dishes got washed. But that's all they can do. They either recognize that they're washed dishes or they don't. But that's the end of the significance. What quality of the, what um, property of that thing is it that makes it significant for everything else? It doesn't make it significant for everything else. See, again, they either recognize it is significant or they don't. They either recognize it and describe it accurately and truthfully as it is, or they don't describe it correctly. So if we consider washed dishes as value dishes and dirty dishes as who cares, all right, all it's a matter of is, is you're something looking and saying, yes, I can see those are washed dishes. They're valued dishes. Feelings have value. I know that because I have washed dishes. I know what washed dishes feel like. No, it's not, and, and not as, 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 as a, an idiot would have it, that it's only significant to me. I, I see this thing, and if it has an intrinsic property... Yeah, like fur. Fur is fur is fur is fur. Feelings are feelings are feelings are feelings. Without looking uh, to existence of other people, without knowing about animals, I could just say, yes, if there was me, only me in the universe, and maybe at some point in future popped into existence another uh, sentient, then I would know automatically that he would have to value that just as um, I value it. That it would suddenly become of importance for him the existence of this thing inside me which, which I call value, which... No, it's not. He's not valued. Again, you just keep getting it wrong. It's the experience. If you don't have the experience, it's not valuable. So unless you're having it, it's the only way that it has value or the prevention of the negative. So the, the negative value has to be prevented. And any positive value is the reclamation from a negative condition. Well, I don't want to get into all that stuff again. But it's the, the other person doesn't experience your sensations or your consciousness he can respect them he can acknowledge them that's it he doesn't experience them you call intrinsic value there would be no need to appeal to categorability um, or um, say the principle of sameness well, of course there is, because we don't experience each other's consciousness. So again, because something has intrinsic value doesn't mean you have access to the value. You can feel it or you can experience it, especially in experience. You can't experience the experience. It's happening in their brain. You can't be in their brain. So there's no way you can have the value. Uh, you have no access to the value. You can only acknowledge its existence. Or the principle of even difference. I'm sure you have you have acknowledged this property that is um, a personal property, and the fact that I want to get away from this pain. Oh, again with this stupid want shit that is completely irrelevant. Who cares what your reaction is? I don't care what your reaction is. I care about the sensations. I couldn't make it any clearer. Feeling 
is value creation. There's nothing in here about running away, dancing, laughing, doing any of those, any gestures you make, any how, what steps you take, how you deal with your value experience. None of that shit's in here. None of that saying anything that has any intrinsic meaning whatsoever. The only thing that means something is the experience of the sensations. That's the argument. Suffering and want to get towards pleasure and bliss. So again, no, no, just nothing. No advancement whatsoever here. Just more, you know, it's a de de devolution. Writing didn't help. So you put it in fucking black and white, and he gets it even more wrong. So, like I say, all you can do is say he's just trying to lie. Because, like I said, I wrote it for him. I gave him the words. Feeling is value creation. You can't, can't be directly observed, must be sampled. Couldn't have said it more clear, more overtly. And what did he do? Fucked it up again. So anyway, fuck you.